What's going on guys, thanks for being here. Today I have a very interesting product to show you guys. This is a 360 rotating platform from Digital Photo. This is a fully mechanical device and this is actually pretty heavy, which is what you want because you can actually do shots like this here, this slow or as fast as you like. So pretty much anything that you wanna shoot on top of this platform here, you can do it. You can actually place the camera you know, this way, higher. And this is great for you to be raw videography, products and all, you know, the stuff that I review here, power cords or whatever. You can put everything here. This is actually great for commercial. So it looks like I found a pretty interesting way to shoot my B-rolls and you know, stuff like this here, cosmetics and all. So this is actually gonna be pretty helpful here. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. And the usual disclaimer, they sent me designer for me to test it out. I don't get paid to say anything here. This video is not sponsored by Digital Photo and all my words and opinions are my own. Besides everything that you see on the platform, except the camera, of course, they also included the uh, hat here with the Digital Photo logo on the front and also the thing on the back. And also they include this shirt, which has the logo on the front and the back looks like this here. So it's a pretty cool bonus. So I'm actually wearing this shirt today, why not? And like I was saying before, this thing is pretty heavy because this is not a toy and to achieve smooth shots, everything needs to be made of metal. Everything you see here is made of metal. I mean, it's not incredibly heavy. You can easily lift this thing with one hand, but it's got some weight on it. This unit weighs exactly 11 and a half kilos or 22 pounds. But if you wanna take this somewhere, not a problem. Just don't throw away the shipping box because that box is actually very sturdy and all the components that are found inside, everything has its own place, its own little compartment there. So if you want to take this on location, just to pack it up in a box. And I'm going to show you guys in real time how long it will take to set this whole thing up. So here's everything. The first thing that you want to do is to actually get a little alcohol with a spray here because some of these components, they have some residual industrial lubrication and all. So you don't have to do it, but I like to do it. So I'm going to start with this plate. As you can see on the bottom, it has rubber feet so it doesn't scratch your table or anything like that. And this is about almost five or four millimeters in thickness. And Everything is made of metal. Next, we're going to use this pole. It has a thread. Simply screw it in here. There you go. Give it a nice twist. And the next thing will be this particular piece, which is the heart of the system. It has bearings similar to what a Steadicam uses. So what you want to do is to actually have this part facing down and the screws here facing up. And you can also adjust the height to any height that you want, depending on what you want to do. And as you tighten this here, this actually moves out so it doesn't get in the way, it doesn't hit the pole here. And next you wanna mount this plate right here, which is made of metal. And it measures about four millimeters in thickness. There's a hole on top, align it, and put the screw right there. It also comes included with the uh, little hex tool. Just to give you a final tighten right here. Don't over tighten, just enough. Then next we're gonna be inserting the rails, which is a standard 15 millimeter rods. As you can see, everything slides very easy. And by the way, you cannot bend this. This is super solid. There you go. So depending on the camera that you're mounting, you can actually be this way or the center or this way here. Don't tighten everything down yet. Leave everything the way it is loose here. Next piece is the accessory. It features a center 3 8 thread and two quarter inch threads right here, which is gonna be facing up. Simply slide this here. And next, this pole is where the camera attaches and this particular accessory, you just mount it this way, tighten it down, secure the pole, and then you put it here. As long as you keep everything loose, you see everything slides very easy and then you tighten everything down later on. And over here is what holds the background. This should be facing up where those two screws are. Slide it down. Next will be the device for the counterweights with the screw facing up. Then you can actually choose depending on the camera size you use. This is a whole one kilo and this is a half a kilo, which is about 2.4 pounds. And this is actually half of that in pounds. You can use one or two. And then you actually tighten this down. And then that's when you actually start tightening the rods here. Make sure everything is centered. So tighten it down. You don't need the tools, everything is by the fingers. And this also comes included with this little ball mount. You can actually mount the camera directly with this ball mount, but all my cameras, they have a Manfrotto plate on the back, so I don't like to remove this just because I'm using a product. So when I actually mount this thing on a tripod, I can actually go from the tripod to here or vice versa. So what I like to do is to actually screw in my Manfrotto plate 
or directly mounted right here in case I don't need to tilt the camera, depending on what I'm shooting right here. Now here's the part that we actually want to lock everything down. Keep the weight as far away as possible here so it actually has a better effect instead of having the weight right there. So I have everything attached. I'm gonna screw right here. Now these two screws right here, I don't like the fact that they actually touch the background directly. So what I did is to grab a washer like this. So I put in between the background and the screw so they don't actually damage the background. And of course you don't want any fingerprints in here because it's gonna show up on the actual footage depending on the depth of field they use. And on this side is a glossy finish which I don't wanna remove right now because most of the time I'm gonna be using the matte finish. And you don't necessarily need to apply this background here every single time because depending on the depth of field they're using, you can actually have stuff on the background when you're spinning the, uh, the camera here, which also looks pretty. So right now, for the purpose of this uh, finishing setting up here, I'm gonna actually install this background. You make sure everything is centered, and then you actually put the washer right here in between the screws and the background. Then when you tighten this in here, it does not hit the background. Then finally, you install the camera. I love the quick release. There you go, system complete. And also keep in mind, since I have all my counterweights right there and no camera right here, the unit obviously wants to spin this way here. So when you actually install the camera, that stops because now it's fully balanced. There's no spinning, unless you want to do this here, right? So depending on the camera that you're using, the size of the lens, the weight of the camera or the lens, you want to add or subtract a counterweight disc right here. So for this camera, because it has a heavy lens, 24 to 105, I need the two counterweights right here. And of course, you can actually adjust the height on a center column right here, all the way down, all the way up. I usually like all the way up. And of course, you can actually adjust the height of this camera, depending if you're shooting on an angle like this here or straight. There you go. And also depending on what you're doing, you can actually put another platform on top here, a square or something larger to show something larger, and also put a larger background right here in case you want a background, such as uh, black plexiglass, white, whatever you wanna do, just cut it to size, something that's, you know, makes sense to actually fit here, because this obviously doesn't fit here, but you can actually modify a couple of things here. And of course, you can actually change the background. You can actually order a white plexiglass if you don't want the black for certain shoots. Or you can actually buy a little Elmer's, like $3 at Walmart. That should do the trick as well. Now you can actually order a glossy plexiglass, which is gonna look nice as well. Now even though this whole thing is made of metal, it's pretty heavy and all, sometimes you might be a little nervous before you purchase this product to see if accidents can actually happen with your camera. For example, the Canon R3 in the back there, it's a pretty expensive camera, so when I shoot products, I'm actually gonna be having this camera right here, the R3, and I wonder if it is safe because if I wanted to walk away, I don't want this thing to collapse, right? So what I'm gonna do is to remove the counterweight discs and see what happens. I tested this before, the only thing it does is to throw off the stability of the whole thing, so which is gonna cause the camera to kind of want to rotate this way. But as you can see, your camera is not going anywhere. So you can walk away, no problem, even though the counterweights are not present on the rig. So your camera is safe right here. So I'm gonna put the counterweight back. And for this particular setup, I think one kilo disc is enough. Uh, maybe a second one. The best way to actually test the center gravity is to actually unmount this, place it flat on the table without being attached to the system and see if the camera wants to fall this way or this way. And then you're gonna decide how many discs you want for this particular setup. So in this example, let's say they wanna shoot a scotch or whatever, you put the thing right here. So you can actually have a boom or anything that you want to shine light through here. So as the device spins, the lighting doesn't change. So you can actually have everything overhead right here. And if you can actually add some small LED lights, you can. This is what this is, uh, accessory plate is for. You can actually have some uh, gooseneck things facing this way here, whatever you wanna do. But I actually prefer to actually set up my lights from the outside of the rig here. Now here's one situation, for example, if you wanna shoot a tall glass like this here with this background, it's not going to do the trick because it is not big enough. But you can actually, again, shoot it without the background and then you can actually make the whole thing spinning, do a slow motion like this with you actually pouring the actual wine or scotch or whatever drink that you want. Just don't hit the device, which should be accomplishing pretty interesting shots right here. But just so you know, with this particular background, you cannot shoot this type of objects here, unless you actually have a larger platform here, and again, a bigger, slightly bigger background, or 
without background at all. Another thing to keep in mind, they don't necessarily have to have this thing on the center all the time because with this type of setup here, there's no real estate to actually fill the whole frame. You simply back this up, and that's when you actually need the two counterweight discs, especially for the setup. And then you come over here. Now you see everything on frame, and there you go. So the system comes included with this little ball mount, but it is the typical generic kind of ball mount. I usually don't like this film, these little things. You know, your camera is going to be secure and all, but the thing is, when you actually adjust it to a precise angle, for example, as soon as you finish screwing, as tight as you want to go, the camera will always do this here. So I actually like more robust things, such as a more photo uh, grip like this here. All you need to do is to actually have a quarter inch adapter and mount it right here and adjust the height properly. Not only this thing is super sturdy, whatever angle they want to do, you can actually quickly set your angle and whatever you leave is going to stop immediately. So what you want to do is to actually get a real ball mount and mount right here, which you probably have five or 10 of those things already. I'm going to be using directly the uh, Manfrotto plate right there because I'm shooting it pretty much straight. I don't need any angling. So, so now you put the camera here and you don't have to worry about anything. Beautiful. actually a real diamond ring, check it out. Right, for this shot here, I could go even crazier, but I really don't feel like because this stuff is so time consuming. So I have a soft box right here. It's supposed to have a secondary diffuser to have a better shape of the bottle. And also a reflector in place of the reflector should be another light like this. But anyway, you get the point. Behind here, I'm using an aluminum foil with a Godox S60, a projection light, shining the light exactly the shape of this particular aluminum foil right here so it doesn't spill anywhere else. And also here on top, I have a snoot. I wish I had another S60 to also control the light even further. So right now I'm shooting with no background and you can also order a larger plexiglass here to shoot a tall thing like this. And also notice that I actually have the camera platform lowered to actually accommodate the size of this bottle. So right now I'm just gonna turn on the soft box on the side. It does this. And over here, just to light the front label, I'm gonna put about 17% of light. You see the difference right there. That's just lighting up the label. And finally, the S60 to shine the light on the back. And there you have it. And then the thing gradually stops. Just a little bit more of the uh, behind the scenes here. This is actually a commercial studio. I have a business to run, so as long as I'm doing this, I cannot have clients coming in. The store is actually open, the front gate there anyway. So a little bit of the behind the scenes here. Since this bar is already cold, all I need to do is to actually kind of glue this thing over here so this light actually bounces back from the aluminum foil to the bottle. But the correct way to do is to cut this thing exactly to the shape of the bottle and then you place this thing on a little stand somehow and then allow enough room for the light to hit the aluminum uh, foil and then bounce back to the bottle. And over here I'm using my Manfrotto heavy little joystick kind of thing going on. You don't need that, just a regular nice Manfrotto or any high-end ball mount would do, except the one that came with this thing here. So with this particular setup, I actually have to put some extra weights just in case, because I had to actually push the rod all the way back there to accommodate a bottle this tall. But again, if you're using a regular ball mount, you don't need the extra weights right here. This is just a precaution. And if you don't have a projection light for shoots like this, you absolutely need, for example, you can actually use iris like this here, 
But for this particular application, I had to use one of those little flappers that shape the light exactly, uh, you know, this much light going on. So with those things here, you can actually decide how much space or how much light you want to actually get exactly to the same shape of the aluminum paper right here. As you can see the accessory, they can use a magic arm, even something this big and heavy right here. I have the light on board so you can actually do everything. So you can do really slow, to as fast as you like. And for this setup right here, I'm shooting in 240 frames in slow motion. And here's the wine glass. Now, when the light hits this particular area of the glass, it's undesirable because you're gonna see all the imperfection of the glass. So again, with this little thing here, you can actually cut and shape the light to whatever you want. Just a tiny little bit of light right here, and this light takes care of lighting the uh, front of the glass. All right, in this particular application, I'm using a jewelry with a macro setting right here. I'm testing this thing to the limit right now because with a macro, the slightest little jerk or whatever that thing is is gonna show up here. Depending on your skills, how you uh, rotate this thing here, this thing should be pretty much flawless. And don't forget to turn off the stabilizer because this thing is already a stabilizer. If you leave it on, it's gonna be kind of jerking and all kinds of weird stuff. Just turn it off. So with the top platform, you can see the versatility of this kit. I'm actually using the background as the actual table or surface right here with a glossy side. And I'm using something more robust, the Monfrotto 3265. This is actually no longer made, but you can actually find this on the bay if you don't have one, which is much better than this little included little toy bomb out here that, you know, this is gonna be impossible to set up a micro shot like this with this thing here, there's no way. And for this, it's up to you. You can actually use external lighting or actually mount something right here. And of course, you also want to make sure that you actually remove any dust, which is a pain in the ass when you're shooting this type of thing you see it with glossy surfaces and all. So that's the end of my review. I hope you found the contents helpful. If you want to subscribe to this channel for more contents like this, I would appreciate it. And also, if you're interested in purchasing this product, please consider using my affiliate links. They don't cost you anything extra. It just helps me create more contents like this. So once again, thank you very much for being here, and I'll see you next time.